Can you believe that the Interlock graphics cards are now a year old? Yes, it's true. They were released about a year ago, obviously, depending on when you're watching this video. And I thought it was a perfect time to catch up with them, give them a bit of a revisit and see how well they've matured over that time. Now, for those of you that haven't kept up with graphics card technologies, about a year ago on the 12th of October 2022, Intel released their first proper gaming graphics cards. During the initial release, there were two cards that were released. There was this one, the Interlock A770. We managed to get one of these literally on launch, so we've got some real early testing of these. And the Intel Arc A750, which was a pretty much identical card, particularly when it came to the LE models, except it didn't have the RGB lighting and it only came with eight gigabyte of VRAM, whereas the A770 came with 16. At the time of the launch, the cards actually came with a fantastic build quality. They were built extremely well and they looked absolutely gorgeous. There was no complaints at all about them. They had great cooling solutions on them, but they did suffer when it came to performance. And that was particularly down to issues with the drivers themselves. Both cards actually suffered from this in particular on older games, which actually put many people off purchasing them because if you can't play your old back catalog, then you're probably in trouble really, particularly when it comes to PC gaming. That's one of the biggest benefits. But for the newer, more modern titles, they actually performed exceptionally well. Now, since then, Intel have dropped many new driver versions. And in particular, they've actually improved the old game performance. That's DirectX 9, 10 and 11 by a lot. But over that year, how well have they actually improved the performance of your more general modern games? Well, to find that out, we dug out the results from our previous testing and we tend to test the more modern AAA titles here, as well as the old test suite. And we decided to retest it again. The card that we decided to retest was obviously the A770 because we did have this one at launch. So it's the oldest set of results that we're going to be able to have and we got some interesting results so let's take a look at those benchmarks and see how well this card re-performed on those games So as you can see from those benchmarks, this card performs exceptionally well still, and it kind of did before, but we'll take a look at the differences in a moment. This time we tested it in three different resolutions, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, whereas our previous testing was actually with two. So we can only really do the comparison on those two, and we'll take a look at those in a minute. When it came to the 1080p results, we saw that this card is more than capable of being able to play all these games in that resolution. Cyberpunk 2077 getting an average of 86 frames per second with a 1% low of 67. 
Doom Eternal gain an average of 238 with a 1% low of 174. Horizon Zero Dawn gain an average of 98 frames per second with a 1% low of 65. And then Shadow of the Tomb Raider gain an average of 134 frames per second with a 1% low of 109. Now Stray did manage to get a pretty decent average frame rate of 129, but there were some random stutters in there which caused the 1% low to be less than half, getting an average of 56. Jumping the resolution up a bit to 1440p, we can see again that the card could more than cope with all of these games, particularly at that resolution, getting an average of 61 frames per second in Cyberpunk 2077, with a 1% low of 49. Doom Eternal managed to get an average of 162 frames per second with a 1% low of 105. Horizon Zero Dawn got an average of 79 frames per second with a 1% low of 58. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider got an average of 103 frames per second with a 1% low of 81. Stray again suffering on those 1% lows here, getting an average frame rate of 112 frames per second but a 1% low of 55. It suffered from the very same problems where there was random stutters in there which caused that 1% low to actually decline quite a bit. The 1440p results though showed that this card was more than capable at doing 1440p, particularly if you're looking for a 60 FPS plus kind of gaming experience. So then we moved on to testing in 4K. Now in 4K, we got a bit of a mixed bag of results here. Some games you would consider quite playable, others probably not so much. You would want to drop the resolution here, but in Cyberpunk 2077, we managed to get an average of 32 frames per second with a 1% low of 28. Now, that meant that the game was actually quite playable, and with the decent 1% lows there, it was reasonably smooth as well. It's just not the kind of experience you'd really want to go for. Doom Eternal managed to get an average of 98 frames per second with a 1% low of 74. Of course, that meant that that game was more than playable and it provided a great experience as well as a very good quality picture. Horizon Zero Dawn managed to get an average of 44 frames per second with a 1% low of 37. Again, that meant that the game was quite playable, but really, because it's such a fast-paced game, you'd probably want a little bit more. Shadow of the Tomb Raider managed to get an average of 58 frames per second with a 1% low of 53. The true optimization of that game coming through there, getting a pretty close result. And then, of course, Stray managed to get an average of 58 frames per second with a 1% low of 41. Strangely enough, when we actually moved Stray up into 4K, yes, the average frames per second did lower to around 58, and you could get over 60 if you were to drop the settings just slightly, maybe just a couple of things down to medium. But what we did see is that the 1% lows actually didn't suffer as bad as the other resolutions. That kind of made the game very playable in that resolution and it looked absolutely fantastic too. Now, as you can see from the results that we've gone through, the Intel Arc A770 is more than capable of playing games, particularly the ones that we tested, in pretty much all of those resolutions. Some of the more modern, really demanding games like Cyberpunk 2077 did suffer when we got to that kind of 4K level, but there are a lot of things that you can do on that game to kind of bring it up as well. We were running all of our tests at a high setting with no help from anything like XESS or AMD's FSR. So if you were to actually drop a couple of those settings and then, you know, enable something like XESS, you could actually get it reasonably good and increase that frame rate quite a bit. But how well does it actually look compared to the original results that we got with the card? Well, let's take a look at that. Now, as I said before, we only tested the Interlark A770 previously at two resolutions. The first one is 1080p. Now, in 1080p, we saw a reasonably good increase in the car's performance. In Cyberpunk 2077, it now gets 86 frames per second over the previous 71. In Doom Eternal, we managed to get 238 frames per second over its previous 222. Horizon Zero Dawn saw the biggest increase, getting an average now of 98 frames per second, whereas previously it got 73. I do remember that game back in the day actually kind of suffering a little bit when it came to the interlock graphics cards so clearly their drivers have fixed something there shadow of the tomb raider there wasn't really that much of a difference you could kind of count it as pretty much the same thing we got an average of 134 frames per second whereas previously we got 130 so there's no real kind of improvement there in stray we got a 10 frames per second increase here getting an average of 129 frames per second on the current card and only 119 during our previous testing Again, that didn't really make that much difference, particularly when the game suffered with its 1% lows, so I wouldn't really count that as a win for the card right now. Then when we jump to the 1440p, there was a bit of a mixed bag of results here. In Cyberpunk 2077, we really didn't see any improvement at all. In fact, we got a 2 frames per second drop on the new card compared to the previous testing that we did, but again, it's so close that you can pretty much count that as the same. Doom Eternal, we only saw an increase of 2 frames per second. Again, just like Cyberpunk 2077, you can kind of 
to count that. Being in the boundary of the testing, so no improvement there. Horizon Zero Dawn, again, showing a good increase here, which means that the driver improvements have actually done something for that game. Now getting an average of 79 frames per second over the previous testing result of 61. Shadow of the Tomb Raider got a pretty decent uplift in performance over the last testing that we did. Now getting an average of 103 frames per second compared to its previous 63. And then of course Stray getting an average of 112 now against the previous 92. Again Stray did get a good improvement here but because of the suffering of the 1% lows I wouldn't really class it as a win. So that's it really. Have the Intel Arc graphics cards really improved over the year that they've released them? We do know that there have been significant improvements particularly when it comes to those older games because they've put a lot more support in for your DirectX 9 and 10 and 11. But when it comes to your more modern titles, it's a bit of a mixed bag of results. In some games, we did see a pretty decent increase. Others, we saw a good increase, but actually a decrease in things like the 1% lows. And for the majority, they were pretty much like for like. So there's not that much improvement really there on this card, but it still is a fantastic card. And it's still, as long as it performs as well as it did originally, you're kind of not losing out really. Do the Intel Arc graphics cards have any more left in them? I don't know. Maybe we've actually hit the tipping point now where they've pretty much fixed all the problems with the drivers and it's just purely the card's hardware that's holding it back now. But we do know that Intel are working on their next generation and they'll be releasing, I believe next year, maybe the next year after that. And hopefully they've learned a hell of a lot from these cards, particularly with the, the kind of live testing they've done on it. And the next generation will come out in not only a better form, but also be a lot more powerful. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the improvements that Intel have made on their arcs. Did you buy one over the last year and what have your experiences been like? I've been using this card now for a year in one of our studio systems. I've had an absolutely no issues with it and I'm going to continue to use it because I just love it so much. Eventually it might get mounted to the wall as a bit of an homage to uh, Intel's very first graphics cards but until then I'm going to actually be installing this in many different systems and testing even more games. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of that and I'm sure as always we will catch you guys in the next one.